will work. Hell no. I've never done this before. Not like there's a man. <laughs> Sub-Zero? Can you hear me? Mortal Kombat is a series that has decades worth of lore spread across two major timelines, which makes it one of the most narratively rich fighting games on the market. Developer NetherRealm Studios is rounding up work on the highly anticipated Mortal Kombat 1, which will take place in a new timeline. Taking place after the events of Mortal Kombat 11, the soft reboot has us equal parts excited and clueless about the main plot points moving forward. And now that the Lin Kuei characters like Sub-Zero and Scorpion, yes, we have Kwai Liang as the new Scorpion, they have entirely new origin stories. Many fans are naturally wondering about what might happen to the clan in this timeline, and most importantly, whether the Cyber Initiative will make a return. It's an interesting topic that definitely deserves to be discussed in detail, so let's dive right in. But before we get back to the questions of whether it can happen once again, Let's quickly give a brief recap of the major events of the Cyber Initiative. In the Midway timeline, which spans from the original Mortal Kombat to Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the Lin Kuei clan Grandmaster devised a plan to turn all of the clan's ninjas into cyborgs just to make them more obedient assassins and strip them of any emotions and free will. A plan that would come to be known as the Cyber Initiative. During the events of Mortal Kombat 2, the first to fall under this initiative were Cyrax and Sector, who were promptly turned into cyborgs while Sub-Zero, i.e. Kwai Liang, and Smoke tried to run away from the clutches of the clan. Unfortunately, Smoke wasn't successful in his escape and was turned into a cyborg nevertheless. In Mortal Kombat 3, the cyber trio comprising Smoke, Cyrax, and Sector are given a mission to hunt down Sub-Zero. Smoke ends up fighting Sub-Zero in a deadly battle, but Sub-Zero was able to shake some conscious into Smoke's corrupted mind, and now the Reform duo team up to take down Cyrax and Sector. However, Smoke ended up getting captured by Shao Kahn while Sector managed to make a swift escape back to his master. Sub-Zero was able to reprogram Cyrax and order him to kill Shao Kahn, but an error in programming led him to end up stuck wandering across Jade's desert instead. With Mortal Kombat 4, the Lin Kuei clan once again got control over Cyrax and he fought alongside Sector for the majority of the game. Cyrax started having flashbacks about his past. Eventually, he was rescued by Jax and Sonya by bringing him over to the Outworld Investigation Agency. Using the organization's technology, Cyrax's humanity was restored. And what happened to Smoke? Well, he eventually got rescued by Noob Cybot in MK Deception and serves as his ally for some time before they face off against Sub-Zero in Armageddon. Sector's programming eventually got corrupted, which caused him to kill the Grandmaster and assume the mantle of Lin Kuei's leader. While he does succeed in killing the Grandmaster, Sub-Zero waltzes out of nowhere, defeats Sector, and takes hold of the coveted Dragon Medallion to become the Grandmaster himself instead. As the new Grandmaster, Sub-Zero eliminates the Cyber Initiative, bringing the subplot to an end in the first timeline. As for Sector, he ended up building an army of identical clones called the Tycoonin, who fall under his direct command. But that particular subplot doesn't seem to get anywhere, and the timeline was eventually reset after Armageddon. Then came NetherRealm Studios' timeline with its own continuity, where we see the Cyber Initiative take place once again in Mortal Kombat 2011. But this time, Raiden uses his foresight to warn Cyrax about the ramifications of this initiative but he doesn't heed those warnings. While Cyrax would eventually go on to openly defy the initiative, he along with Sector get captured and turned into cyborgs yet again. As for Sub-Zero and Smoke, the duo manages to flee the Lin Kuei clan while the latter gets abducted once again just like the original, but Raiden interferes in between to save him from getting converted into a cyborg. However, Sub-Zero ends up getting kidnapped afterwards and is promptly converted into a cyber form of himself. The new cyber Sub-Zero serves Lin Kuei for some time, but Raiden and the others are able to successfully reprogram him to change his allegiances once again. During this period, it's revealed that the cybers are controlled by something called the Slaving Protocol, which makes them obedient. Anyways, Cyber Sub-Zero, now in control of his own free will, takes on Sector and defeats him. 
During the battle against Outworld forces, Nightwolf defeats Cyber Cyrax, which marks the end of his story in the timeline. Cyber Sub-Zero and Smoke are also killed in this ensuing battle and end up becoming revenants of Quan Chi, all the while Sector goes to the Lin Kuei clan to kill the Grandmaster and assume the leadership of the cyborgs. As you already can notice, the major events leading up to this battle were largely the same, but the outcome did change, as Sector is actually successful this time around. Sub-Zero returns in his revenant form in Mortal Kombat X. But the question is, how is he in human form now? Well, actually, that's explained in a Mortal Kombat X comic. Quan Chi used his magical powers to take Sub-Zero's soul out of his cybernetic body and recreate his body to get him back to a human form. Later on, we see him getting rescued by Raiden before he starts training once again to get back to the Lin Kuei clan. Meanwhile, Sector would kill the Lin Kuei Grandmaster and was ruling over the clan with an iron fist and mind-controlled Cyrax as his best soldier but Sub-Zero was able to swoop in once again and defeat him in an old-fashioned duel. Following Sector's defeat, Cyrax automatically assumed the role of the leader, but now that he's finally freed of the corrupting forces and able to make a choice of his own free will, and wanting Sub-Zero to rebuild his clan, he ends up destroying the cyborgs of the clan by initiating a self-destruct protocol. While the Cyber Initiative was put to an end in the context of the Lin Kuei clan, the Special Forces ended up extracting some secret data about the Initiative and weaponized it in the form of Triborg. The sentient being had the conscience of Smoke, Cyrax, Sector, and even Cyber Sub-Zero, which made him an extremely powerful being. Triborg had the objective of exterminating all life forms and forming his own unit, the Takunin. However, we don't know much about what happened to this unit. Perhaps they may come back in Mortal Kombat 1. Who knows? Jumping to Mortal Kombat 11, Kronika once again revives the Cyber Initiative to further her cause. Cyrax and Sector are brought back in their cyber forms, and Frost, being upset at Sub-Zero for making amends with Scorpion, undergoes cyberization to be a part of this new initiative. Sub-Zero and Scorpion take her down, and the former takes this opportunity to reprogram Cyrax. Before the trio could do anything, they were attacked by Sector and was taken out eventually. Much like what happened before, Cyrox got his free will back and self-destructed himself to put an end to the Cyber Link away. Sector also died at the hands of Kano, who turned him into a time bomb of sorts, leaving Frost to lead the remaining Cyber Link away by Kronika's side. Kronika was eventually defeated for good, and Liu Kang restored the timeline once again, undoing whatever happened in the past. Jump to Mortal Kombat 1 2023, and we've already seen Cyborg Cyrax and Cyborg Sector in the gameplay trailer. But what's important to note here is that the two actually belong to the roster of cameo fighters, and these characters aren't confirmed to be a part of the story as of now. Yes, we know we saw that one specific cameo character as part of the story cutscene, but until we get confirmation on the matter, we have to consider a few possibilities and come to a conclusion accordingly. If cameo fighters such as Cyrax and Sector are indeed part of the game's story, this would mean that the Cyber Initiative indeed happens once again in this new universe. But what's interesting is that Sub-Zero, Scorpion, who is now Bihan's brother Kwai Lang, and Smoke aren't seen as cyborgs yet. So that someone among them would have most likely conspired to turn the ninjas into cyborgs for the same reason their previous Grandmaster did. Of course, it's possible that the events leading up to the Cyber Initiative might turn out to be different, but the end results will obviously be the same, and Cyrax and Sector will be the first ones to fall once again. <laughs> Pitiful. But even if cameo fighters wouldn't be a part of Mortal Kombat 1 2023's story, we suspect that the Cyber Initiative might once again take place. You see, unlike the original timelines where the Lin Kuei clan had a code of honor, this rendition of the group of assassins is a lot more concerned with power and status. According to Sub-Zero's description on the MK1 website, this new Grandmaster would leave no stone unturned in his quest for power and make the Lin Kuei clan one of the mightiest fighting forces of Earthrealm. Between this and a less than ideal relationship between the leading faces of the Lin Kuei clan, it's very likely that something or the other will eventually trigger a power struggle for control of the clan, which might lead to Sub-Zero leading the charge for a new initiative, an initiative that would turn the disciples of the clan into ultra-obedient assassins for a master with little in the name of emotions or free will. The Cyber Initiative all over again. 
If such a thing ends up happening, the Lin Kuei clan members would all be converted into cyborgs regardless of whether they approve or reject this new mandate. But now that Scorpion is a part of this very clan and would go to any lengths to preserve the integrity of it all, he might end up going against his own brother over the Cyber Initiative, which might start the same subplot in an entirely new light. The other theory we have is that Kronika, now confirmed for Mortal Kombat 1, is pulling these cameo characters into the new timeline, and this is where the Cyber versions of Cyrax and Sector will come into play. But it's also important to mention that all of this is complete speculation at this point, since a lot of crucial details about the game's story are still shrouded in mystery. The Cyber Initiative could very well just not be a part of the reboot's narrative, and the inclusion of Cyber Sector and Cyber Cyrax as cameos are without any narrative implications for how they ended up in these suits. Either way, the new premise definitely has a lot of potential, and Mortal Kombat 1 seems like it would be a great pick for both newcomers and veterans familiar with the complex lore of the franchise. We will be checking out the game when it releases for PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and Switch on the 14th of September this year. Do you think the Cyber Initiative will happen in the new timeline? What are your theories? Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Pulse upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.